How you doing everyone? This is Matthew Satva from Direct Dreadnought, your Dreadnought PS4 replay guy. Well, it's the end of August, which means it's time for our Direct Dreadnought channel and monthly update. Now, there isn't much going on as far as Greybox is concerned. I've been looking at Twitter and the Dreadnought forums, and there really is no new news for August, and August was a rough month for me, as next month will be. As you've noticed, there haven't been as many videos as I put out normally because it's the end of summer, and in the industry that I work in, it's typical for all the work to be done towards the end of the year before the weather gets cold and the ground gets solid. So I've been very busy, and even though I've been making a lot of money and the work is very rewarding, I just have been out of town a lot and haven't had as much time to make as much content as I wanted to. Additionally, I actually still love playing Dreadnought for at least a couple hours every day, and if it comes down to it, I'd rather play than make videos, which I think is a good sign. Another good sign is that we have a lot of people playing the game and a lot of people joining the channel. I typically get at least 20 or more new subscribers every month and I think that's great it means our community is slowly but surely expanding and advancing and all the subscribers and regular players that I do play with are getting much better and are becoming deadly and very vicious opponents which I think is great too as it keeps the game challenging and enjoyable as we do with every monthly update, I would like to give a shout out to all the new subscribers and all the subscribers that make the comments section so much fun to read and respond to. And if I don't call your name as a new subscriber, just remember that in your YouTube settings, many times it hides your name if you subscribe to a channel. So I can only shout out to those of you that I got notifications for. Even though we had well over 21 subscribers this month that are new to the channel, I only got a list of eight to give you, and that would be the immortal and illustrious Desert Templar, a friend and rival for a long time now, Oscar Nash, BLS71, Sue and C, Kyle Weiss, Nick Mecca, I love the name by the way, Robert Deal and Jeff Moody, who I may have called out before, but I believe he joined on the cusp of the change of the month. So if you got a second shout out, bonus to you, Jeff Moody. Welcome to the Dreadheads, folks, and thanks for docking in Sinley Bay. Now a quick shout out, of course, to all the long-term and new subscribers that have been putting a lot of effort into the comments section and coming up with great new ideas for new content for the game and the channel and also weigh in on things like strategy gameplay or just like to say hi and be social with other subscribers and of course that would be Lu Jiang, Josh Bracey, Trevor Tamman, Robert Deal, Jeff Moody, Yols, Scroat, Manny Hung, Desert Templar, Seba, 727, Shane Na, Robert K. Wolf, Lone Wolf, Mr. D. Bart, who is starting to get pretty savage. He's been getting the better of me in quite a few matches lately. Oscar Nosh, and of course, new to the channel and a longtime veteran and nomination for the top 10 player list of all time on PS4, the dude, aka Dude VT who just recently we made a video for with his four kill mega nuke. What a fun video that was. Well, I thought we would have something a little less scripted and newsworthy this month since there isn't much news for the game, but there's plenty going on for the channel. And I got in late Friday and barely had the time to go on a quick date, unpack and clean things as well as feed the cats and show them some love as I hadn't seen them in five days. And I woke up today, got a lot of chores done, caught up on a lot of bills and that sort of thing and decided it was time to play. Now, last night I was a little alarmed because I didn't get a chance to 
log on to PS4 and get into Dreadnought until about 11 o'clock at night and unfortunately I did not get a game. I waited about 11 minutes, reset my timer, waited 7 minutes and then decided to quit and catch up on some YouTube and of course social media. Now that did have me a little worried because I went away for five days and when I went away I was getting of course two to three minute matches. They were really great and each of those matches were very difficult and very challenging and a lot of fun. So I tried my hand again today at around one o'clock and I was very happy to find that my first match was a three minute wait and my second and third matches were back to back and it was basically like that for about 10 matches in a row today and it was a lot of fun. Leonard Smoke was out there kicking a lot of butt, so was Six Pack Seven, Neo, and a whole bunch of other really great players. It was a very difficult fight. I didn't see Grizzali today who is usually a regular when I'm on but it was still a lot of great matches, very tough, very few matches in which I got zero deaths. At least somebody got me out there. Special shout out to Lethane. Lethane, I don't think, watches the channel nor is a subscriber and isn't on the Dread Chat, which got recently reinvented and reorganized. So now we have three separate Dread Chats, three separate community boards, so even that's expanding, which is a great thing. But Lethane, uh, not to be mean, and this is unscripted, so I'll just go ahead and say it. Sometimes I go into a match and there are players that I just kind of smile when I see because I know it's going to be a good match. There are a couple of players out there who don't know their ship, don't know the game so well. Recently got into legendary fleet mode and when I see them I know I'm gonna get a few extra bonus kills and when they get the drop on me I typically get away just fine and Lethane today got me with a ram and uh, I believe a nuke and most of the matches Lethane used to be one of those players where uh, most players break even with kills and deaths and maybe score a command ship kill or whatnot a couple players are on the top of the list because they had a really good match and of course you have the bots which typically get one or two kills maybe three and three four or five deaths and Lethane used to get maybe one kill and eight deaths it was pretty bad <laughs> but today he was pulling out some six threes some seven twos some five four some really great matches for Lethane and Lethane got me a couple times really good Draconis' Real was playing some really great matches today. I was really happy with the quality of his aggressiveness and uh, professional gamerness, I guess you could say. Uh, trying out a new Destroyer Stasis build, and it was pretty mean, and he got the better of me a couple times too. So there's a lot of really great games out there. I had a lot of fun, and it's amazing that this game has such little new content, uh, minimal support, which I know may not be the employees at Graybox's fault because money is money and you need money to develop. And when you don't have the money to develop, you don't have much from the R&D department. But we are getting some new patches over the summer and they were pretty good. There was that problem with the engine sound bug but they did take that away eventually they could not solve the problem took it away and it really doesn't matter and to be honest if i was captaining a vessel and i could hear my engines over everything else i'd be calling down to my engineer to see what the problem was so not having ambient engine noise really doesn't bother me and it doesn't seem to bother anyone else either and the other content that we got from the dreadnought summer patch one and two was very well received and pretty much right on the money and so that little hiccup can be overlooked and to be honest even though for a while after the second patch there were a couple of ambient engine noise sound hiccups i have to say in the last couple of weeks even though i haven't been playing as much as i want to those hiccups are now gone 
and there may be occasional lag spikes, but nothing really that bad. So the play quality has been really high. And I really like the trend they're going with as far as balancing. And I think that's going to be the question this month. Do you think that Graybox is handling their new strategy well of balancing in very, very minimalistic ways, very light-handed touch, trying to make little tweaks to the game without doing too much to change things in the way of balance. And we might have another question later on. I am uh, flying off the cuffs here and enjoying a tasty beverage while I do it. But I think that will be the question, at least the first question for this month. Now, I did go back and look at the results from last month's poll, and I guess most people are very divided on what content they want to see because the poll results were just about even for all the choices. And of course, Yulz brought up a terrific suggestion seeing as Apex and other games now has cross-platform support between PS4 and PC. Also, with news of PS5 having a lot of cross-platform support and backwards capability and compatibility, we now see that it may be possible with a little effort to bring the PC players in the PS4 fold or vice versa, I guess you could look at it, but I think we have the better larger, more active, and more awesome community, so I think we'd be bringing them into our playground, but I'm sure they would say the same about us. I think that would be a terrific boost to the game's numbers. It would also help the PC players out quite a bit since they have been reporting long wait times and queue times, and we really haven't been ever since late last year, I would say, just around Halloween to Thanksgiving, our legendary queue times have been holding pretty steady at, I would say, an average of four minutes now. Of course, there are days like yesterday, late last night, where I couldn't get a game, and I've never had that happen before. I've always been able to get a game, even if it took me 10 minutes. But then, like today, I log on, and most of the time I have a couple minute wait, barely enough time to go to the bathroom and get a drink, and many times, it's back-to-back -back gaming with different players every match, and I think that's great. So, I think that about covers what we have as far as news with Dreadnought and our previous poll. If you'd like to discuss anything else about what the devs or Six Foot are doing or planning, or what you would like them to include into the game or in future patches, Please leave comments below, and of course, I'll expand upon them as soon as I can or get to them in next month's update. So what's new with the channel? Now, we've been having a lot of new content, and apparently everyone so far likes it all, which is really hard for me. Sometimes if you come out with a video and it doesn't get many views or likes, it's easy to tell what people want and what people don't want, and then of course I come out with a video that gets many views and many likes, and that's easy to promote or to continue. But that isn't really the case with Direct Dreadnought. I get a good amount of views and likes for my replay content, which is why I got into this hobby, and it's my favorite aspect of it. But the player replay casts have been going very well. People really seem to enjoy watching other people besides me have a good time with the game and i wish people would send me more when we first started doing player replay casts i was backlogged and had to unfortunately make people wait two to three weeks because i wanted to release one a week so that we would have more varied content and a little more structure to the channel which i know that the structure for the channel isn't very good right now because i have very little free time but by the end of September, I should be returning to a normal work schedule, which means I'll be returning to a normal DREC Dreadnought schedule. So, uh, we have started running a little low on 
player replays. So if you wanna go ahead and send some in, that would be just great. And don't be intimidated by the likes of the Space Apes or some of the other really great players that we've had on the channel. Go ahead and send a replay that you like and that you're proud of and we will post it on the channel, no problem. Remember, Scrote has had unbelievable matches with unbelievable kill death counts and unbelievable quick victories, especially in onslaught mode where Scrote got sometimes over 4,000 points and those aren't the replays that he sent in. Scrote sent one in that was very personal to him and that he had a lot of fun playing and wanted you guys to see too. And it was one where he got killed a couple times, I believe even two or three times. So don't be afraid to send your favorite replay in. Some of the other things that have been going well, of course, are my tips and strategy videos, which always get a lot of views and a lot of likes, but unfortunately, those take the longest to make especially my advanced tactics videos. Many times those take eight to 16 hours to make. They're quite a lot of work and I really, really enjoy them and want to get back into them. However, they may not be on the menu for a month or more. I did get to finish the how to survive the best uh, video for the how to beat the best series. And I like that series. I think it went well. I don't think there's gonna be any more installments uh anytime soon and if i do it's probably going to be another topic or another type of tactic video but those seem to get a good amount of views but not as much as many of my other videos and of course one of the ones that did get many views are my monthly updates which you will be seeing once a month no matter what excuse me while my cat goes totally berserk on my microphone hopefully when we're in editing, we don't hear that. Right, Nico? Anyway, so one thing that seemed to catch everyone's eye is the Carriers Are Real video, and I wanted to make another Carrier video on Thursday, but I didn't get home till Friday, and even though the video is just about halfway done, I think I'm going to finish that on Sunday and release it on Labor Day. For those of you not in the U.S., Labor Day is a day in which everyone just takes off for reasons and stuff and things. Uh, <laughs> all of our other American holidays uh, have a reason or a theme or they're a holiday, but Labor Day is just our, you know what, let's take the day off day, and uh, so we do. It's, it's pretty big too, and it's a long weekend, and it usually kicks off our holiday season from September to December when we have a lot of holidays and the year gets a little better for us. So I did make a comprehensive video, it's not done yet, on three carriers, six different ships, two from each of the mega corporations, and they have really balanced stats and loadouts, but there are some uh, minor but important game-changing modules that I included in those builds and I'm very excited and I hope you guys like it. I have made other uh, game content suggestion videos uh, to try to promote ideas to the devs that may resonate with players and viewers such as suggestions for new maps, suggestions for new game modes, and of course, something that's near and dear to my heart that isn't as popular with you was my PvE single player Dreadnought campaign. So those videos usually get between 100 and 200 views and a few likes, but the Carriers Are Real video is currently well over 300 views with 22 likes and 24 comments. So that tells me that even though Yulsa's idea of merging the server is probably more practical and beneficial for the game in the short term, in the long term, many of you are hungry for more content. And even though you may get more market items, some balance changes, and some special effects or sound effects corrections or adjustments in the game, 
you seem to be hungry for a new ship class in the game. So I went ahead and I'm creating a video that would introduce the carrier ship class while trying to maintain a balance that doesn't throw off the other ships in the game, make other ships in the game somehow worth less by introducing carriers, but also adding some new and exciting game mechanics that aren't game breaking, but are unique to carriers that would give them potentially very niche and specialized advantages that other ships couldn't do. Because if we just introduce carriers as another jack of all trades ships, well, we already have one, it's called the Destroyer. So, and of course, with the new carrier builds, mechanics, and modules. I have suggestions for a complete overhaul of Strikecraft, particularly Fighters, which is a module I think that has very little love in the game. Uh, I actually got together with one of the subscribers to the channel and we tried doing a double jumping Monarch fighter build and it did go well for one or two games but in most other games it, it got its butt kicked and I've had suggestions and requests to do a carrier dreadnought build with just the fighter module and it doesn't usually go well so definitely fighters need to be overhauled no matter what happens with carriers but I think we're going to continue on with that and next week we're going to introduce that new carrier video. We also have a new high scoring replay in the Stabia, which, you know, I've done before. There are a couple of Stabia replays on my top 10 Oberon replay list, but it was such a good game that I think I'm going to release it for next week's personal DREC replay. Additionally, me and Sharky today had a very, very good game, and this is something I've wanted to do for quite some time. We both got a was thrown into a match together randomly. We both did very well by uh, cooperating without being on mics and we were like two peas in a pod. It was a great match and we both happened to record it. So I'm going to try to do the first ever direct dreadnought two view replay video where we're going to go back and forth with my view and Sharky's view on the same match. And this is something I want to do for a while. There was a suggestion and reportedly Greybox and Sixfoot were going to release an eSports portion of the game by returning custom matches to PS4 with an observer mode. And that's what got me into wanting to do player replay casts about six months ago, but that unfortunately never materialized and now we are stuck doing what we can and kind of jury rigging the situation to get esports into the game. And one idea I had a couple months ago was to have a match that multiple people recorded so that we could bounce back and forth strategically from multiple players' viewpoints and I almost had one where I believe it was uh, me and three other dreadnoughts and there's two on each side. There were many broadsides and there were also tactical cruisers in the mix. So none of us died and we just hammered on each other in this one part of Red Sands for probably three minutes straight, which is an eternity in the game and no one died and it was really it reminded me of the third star wars prequel movie revenge of the sith with the battle over coruscant with these ships just hammering away at each other and very few of them exploding while still doing a lot of damage to each other and looking very impressive with broadsides repeater fire flak missiles and torpedoes flying back and forth and i was hoping that Everyone in that match recorded it, but only one other person recorded it and the recording was corrupted So that did not materialize. So I'm very excited to give this a try with Sharky 1302 and we're going to have our first multiple view video replay and if it goes well, 
hopefully we'll be able to do it again in the future. And if you guys have a match in which multiple players recorded the same match from different perspectives, different point of views, please contact me and we'll see what we can do to make a cinematic version of some of these matches. And of course, this is building up for eSports where we can have maybe a team versus team replay cast where we have maybe four, five, or even six or more perspectives, we can then make a true eSport video where we can bounce back and forth to where the action is all across the map. And I think that's very exciting. The other video that seemed to get a lot of support, likes, and views on the channel was, of course, the top 10 players of all time on PS4. And I do want to do another top 10 or top 5 list for other categories in Dreadnought, but I think that's probably going to happen late September, early October, when my schedule clears up just a little bit. But of course, we have to have topics and suggestions to make that happen, so don't be bashful. And of course, leave comments for the next big player vote that we have on the channel and on the PSN community boards and chat rooms. Even though the game isn't progressing as some other games have, it is still going strong because we have a wonderful community and a great player base. And that's because of you folks and the dedication and love you have for the game and being fans of both the game and my channel. Just because I have less content on the channel the last month or two doesn't mean that I'm losing interest in the game or that the game is fading away whatsoever. It's just my own personal schedule and hopefully I'll be back to a minimum of three videos a week after August, September time frame and hopefully with some more time off towards the end of the year, we'll do a lot bigger and better projects for the channel, especially with officer briefing reviews, tactics, and of course, Dreadnought Esports. But I'm gonna leave it there and uh, expect to see my new carrier video coming out next week, a replay with two different player points of view, and of course, a very good Stavia replay coming out next week. Well, I hope you enjoy your weekend, and if you're living in the US, I hope you have a great Labor Day be sure to get out there and enjoy the weather while you can. Well, that's it for me for now, and I'll see you soon in Sinley Bay.